one of the uh, experiments that's just delivered to the station inside that uh, SpaceX Dragon cargo uh, vehicle is investigating how cells adapt to uh, stresses they encounter from being in the low Earth orbit uh, weightless environment. It's called the Advanced Plant Experiments 2, or APEX 2, and this morning we're going to learn about it from Principal Investigator Dr. Timothy Hammond of the Durham Veterans, Veterans Affairs Medical Center and Duke University School of Medicine in Durham, North Carolina. Dr. Hammond, thanks for joining us on Space Station Live. Good morning. It's a pleasure. That's great to have you here. It's hard It's hard enough to figure out why entire organisms react as they do, but uh, tell us why you are focusing on the, on the uh, cellular level, if you will. Well, we have the privilege of flying yeast, which actually have about half the same genetic makeup as a person. And our long-term goal is to repurpose drugs. Getting new drugs on the market is expensive, and finding one without side effects is difficult. And in the VA, we have uh, commonest diagnosis is type 2 diabetes, and the commonest medicine for that is metformin. And what we have found is patients that take metformin for diabetes are protected from certain forms of cancer. Modeling that, those cancers is difficult on the ground because in the middle of the cancer, you have very little gas exchange. And it's exactly the same in space. You have very little convection. The gases don't move like they do on the ground. So we think space is a very good way to model the inside of a tumor and to look for new drugs. Well, let's see, you're, you're actually using brewer's yeast for this experiment, I understand. What, what makes that appropriate for this type of research? Brewer's yeast is great because it's simple. It's simple to grow. We know every gene that it has and its control systems are very simple and it has some special enzymes that make it very easy to uh, do sophisticated molecular biology and knock genes out. So we actually have a series of genes, a pool of genes, uh, of, of, a pool of strains in which one gene is knocked out of every strain, a different gene, and it's been replaced by a piece of DNA that we know it sequence. And when we then grow the yeast under a uh, pressure, in this case space, or space with and without a drug, and that way we can uh, count those barcodes, as we call them, that we put in, and know what gave us survival advantage and disadvantage when the samples come back. How, how um, does the experiment actually operate on the station in terms of autonomous, crew involvement, both? Well, actually, this time what we've done is we've put, if you've ever seen a fluorescent jellyfish that glows green, right. the protein that makes it grow green has been isolated, and we have its DNA, and we've put that in front of every gene in the genome as well. So it's spotted. Each strain reports on the, when, when a gene is transcribed, it also transcribes that protein that makes a green fluorescence. So we have plates that have 384 different strains, each one reporting a different gene. And over 10 plates, we can get the whole genome. And there's actually a fluorescent plate reader on station. We put one plate at a time. We measure the gene expression every 10 minutes for 18 hours, and we get the entire ballet of how yeast respond to uh, space. Uh, that's just that's amazing how, uh, how that is, is planned to operate. How are you going to be able to tell um, basically how the cells respond to the stresses uh, on the, from the orbital environment? Well, of course, we have ground controls for comparison. And our Canadian uh, collaborators who actually do the spotting, Canada has fantastic robotics, just like they made the Canadian arm for the International Space Station. They have some very, very good robotics. And they just uh, published a paper in Science last week in which they look at 3,700 different responses to stresses and drugs on the ground. So that gives us a fantastic reference library. So we really understand what's unique about space and what we can exploit in space that we can't do on the ground. Um, and, and of course, what, we'll talk about your goals to figure out, are they to figure out which plants grow best in space or how to genetically engineer plants so that they can grow well in space or might even the findings be applied to cells of people who will be actually be in space? Well, actually, we're interested, we're interested in helping the astronauts, of course, but we're interested in veteran patients in VA hospitals and Americans in American hospitals. 
and in international countries. What we want to do is repurpose drugs, and we're interested in whether the lack of convection in space, the lack of gas movement, gives us a good model for tumor agents for anti-cancer drugs that are better than on the ground. So what we will bring back is the knowledge of which pathways attack tumors so that we can use those drugs or even design better drugs on the ground once we know the pathways involved. Well, and you just I think you just answered my last question, but um, it, it, the unique, I guess, environment of space uh, offers you actually the, I assume you can have direct interaction with the crew um, as a principal investigator, right? We do. We, of course, have to go through the Capcom like everybody else, like you see on TV. Um, but yes, we can. And we try to design an experiment that um, uh, is fairly automated. So we don't take it. So we have abundant crew time when we need it, but we try not to overuse that privilege. Well, we're certainly looking forward to uh, hearing all about it even further. And, um, and uh, we really appreciate you joining us today on Space Station Live, Dr. Hammond. Thanks a lot. Our pleasure. Thank you so much, sir.